If you are a big soda drink, big soda drinker, get ready for some surprising news because soda, soda is really expensive by three dollars. Is it really worth it? Find out on Give Me a Break. Now I'm going to ask a question here. If you're thirsty, what do you like? What would you like? What do you like to drink? Ice, a cold, refreshing water, maybe tea. How would you like to know that in your state, in somewhere in your state, there is a soda tax? Like right here, like everywhere you go, there is a soda tax. Let me tell you, when I go out, when I go get something to drink, I expect cheap. I expect to get some. I, I expect to get a cheap drink. Like, there's a lot of states from the United States that have, in this country, that have the soda tax. Like, California, Pennsylvania, California, San Francisco, Oakland. Albany, Boulder, Colorado, Cook County, Illinois, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington. And I don't want to pay three bucks for a soda. Like, you know how much a soda costs? It costs a buck. It costs like one dollar or 86 cents to get a soda. Like, it's just a soda. Like it's soda. Like if you buy a two liter bottle of Coke, it costs like two bucks. And that's gonna go for three bucks. Like one buck, and that's gonna go for three dollars. People just need to sit there and, and say to themselves, look. Like, if you live in Philadelphia, you need to start realizing, oh, wait a minute. It's really expensive to get a soda. That's right, it is. Texas does not have the, uh, the new law in this, but except for one place in Texas, that is the U.S. at Sluxton. You know how much it costs to get a soda there? $3.25. That is way expensive. Vending machines, $3. If we're free to get soda, not, we're free to get, this is the United States. We but this is the United States. We can get whatever we want at any price. For the cheapest price. Not soda for like... Not like a two liter soda for like three dollars. Like in Philadelphia, there's a pizza place. And then you go across the street to get a soda. That is just harsh. But it's good though. It's a way to get out of soda. Like, it's the only thing we can drink besides water. There's Powerade, there's all those Powerade. Like, I got this soda from a, from a convenience, which I'm not going to name, for like 70 something cents. But it's a good, it's a good thing to have. If y'all know how you know what it is. It's a corner store. There's a corner store back down in, down on Fall Drive. I get props to them for, 
Like, why don't you tax soda? It's a drink. Like, why don't you tax drinks? That's like two for you to get two liters of milk. They would tax you. Like, you it would be something like called the milk tax. Don't get my idea. And this, like the milk tax. Like, if you want to get milk, that's on you, buddy. Like, I don't want to get soda for like three. $3.25. That is wrong. Them freaking politicians, they don't know what's up. childhood education. I'm not with that, but not... If I go to Philadelphia and get three bucks for soda, how much am I paying to the people? Like three bucks. So I'm going to spend like five days... Three times five... Like I'm going to spend like five days in Philadelphia. But I accept five sodas times three dollars. I have no problem with drinking a soda, but I'm going to pay $3. Like, I'm going to pay two more dollars. I'm going to get paid $1 for a soda. Period. The fountain drinks. They're cheaper. Usually, I'll go to Stripes to get myself like a uh, two liters of soda. That's three bucks. I'm fine with that. That's no, I was fine with that, but that's no problem. But if I were to go to Philadelphia, that is a problem. If the IRS wants soda, just pay them soda. Like, you, like, do you pay the, does, does your IRS pay taxes for soda? No. Like, I don't want to have to pay my taxes to the IRS and give them a soda. Pay them a tax and say, hey, here's a soda. Say, hey, okay, here's your tax money, and say, here, here's your soda. Like that's that's fine. You want you want to have someone to go across the street. to get a soda, right? That's right. Think about it. If you're really thirsty and you want a good soda, you gotta pay $3. If you don't have that kind of money, sorry, you're gonna swallow your own saliva. You know, my dad used to tell me, if you don't like what you get, don't eat it. 
And you can be damn sure that he was right. But in my opinion about this, it's a bad tax. The Philadelphia City Council of Defense attacks saying they're raising enough money to put 2,700 kids in pre-K to open 11 community schools. What? If they did that my, they did that in my state, if they did that where I live, I would just move, move to Texas. I would just move to Te I would just move out of Texas and go somewhere else like New York. Like if a poor person, no offense to a poor person, if a poor person wanted to go get a soda, they're going to pay like, they're basically in the poor people to pay a buck more. Just look at this poll, right? Let me show you this. Let me tell you this poll, right? Philadelphia, the the soda went down less than negative fifty-seven percent. Winds up to five percent. Now, what about this fat tax? Why, like, why are people taking up this fat tax seriously? I'll explain that next. Who's the law dynamic kind of tax? The fat tax. Basically, if you go somewhere like in Denmark, if you go to go to a supermarket and then, and you buy yourself like a high value food. They charge you a certain amount of money. Newsflash. This ain't happened in my country. If it were to happen in my country, why would we just... Like if I, like, like let's say, you want to buy a pudding, that's like a dollar ninety nine, then they charge you five bucks extra. So you paid six dollars to get a six pack of pudding, twelve pack soda. You buy, you buy twelve pack soda. It's like let's say two dollars, and then they charge you for a certain amount of calories. They charge you because like two hundred fifty calories. Price will go up to like ten dollars. This is one of my zero tons that I hate. The fat tax. Like I basically spent all my life trying to study off of taxes like this. Tax fraud. Like this is fraud right there. Like the Philly the tax scam. That's a scam right there. That's fraud. Philadelphia's a fraud. If I know someone who lives in Philadelphia, get out of there and move to Texas. Sanctuary of France and foods contain 14% total of tax revenue between 2011-2012. New Mexico, 2014. 12% reduction in tax drinks.
You want to pay taxes on the school building? Your tax dollars will go in to buy soda. And how should manufacturers respond to sugar taxes? Just, just get a cheap one. You have to pay like eighteen dollars for a container of five to eight grams, a hundred million liters of sugar. So the bottom line is, if you want to get your favorite food, you get to pay more because of because of a certain amount of fat. I don't, I don't buy that kind of crap. If you're here, if you're right here where I live, I thought I'd just give them a little bigger salute. There's your tolerance and stuff like this. I'm just giving the middle finger salute right now to to the Philadelphia people who. To Denmark. This is the middle finger salute to Denmark. The middle finger salute to Philadelphia. It's like if you want to get gum, if you, if you want to get your favorite gum, like, like you don't want to get steak. Like, I'm not gonna get in, into more of this. Like Brutos, I'm gonna tell you right now. Brutos in Philadelphia, and across the street, you get yourself a soda. So get pizza, then go across the street. I would buy that, but if I were to go to Philadelphia, I would just give the middle finger salute right now to those guys. Because I hate the fat tax. I seriously hate the fat tax. Period. Schools are high quality government. Like, Billy spends more than $6,000 per child. Catholic school starts less than Five thousand dollars. I have zero tolerance against crap like this. Even if I did, I don't just throw that soda right at them and say, Hey! This is all your fault, Philadelphia! I want the sodas back to 99 cents! You cross the line in Philadelphia. All you ever care about is the children. See, all you care about is children in their schools. Stop caring about the children and get your asses in there and get rid of the soda tax. Then get a demo. Get your asses over to the Senate and get get rid of the fat tax. I don't want to spend a bunch of money to for my favorite food. Like I hate spending ten dollars to get something I like. like. I like, I like, I like a Boston butt. Like 
don't know how many how many fat it's got in it, but if you're gonna charge me that much money for this, you're out of your mind, guys. There is no excuse. What I'd say about this? Get rid of it. Get rid of the sugar tax. Get rid of the fat tax. Basically, get rid of everything. Let us go back to the way it was before. I don't know. I mean, I don't have much more to say. We spent every single minute of this program we're talking about every single tax, and we haven't even gotten to the really good stuff yet. I gave you my opinions on every single tax issue that there is, from the soda tax to the sugar tax to the fat tax. There's not even the milk tax, but if there was a milk tax in the Texas, I would just move it out. So all we'll do is we'll take a break, come back, and then we'll do another segment. We'll do another segment about this. We'll do another, we'll do another segment. Well, I do because I've got the computer right here. Let me tell you, I have a computer right there. Looking at news videos and articles. And what I do. So we'll take a break, we'll come back and see what happens. We'll be right back. Okay, for the last day of the other day, I've been looking at videos, news articles of students getting suspended for all kinds of reasons. Some of them, some of them like this year, and some of them from like like years ago. Let me tell you, we've looked at students that were suspended for stupid reasons. Like last time when we did this program, we looked at we looked at some students that were suspended for like stupid reasons. Like I would show you like some of the. Uh, This was this one was like last year, May of like May like 2016. Some high school students were suspended for partying. And this happened on a trip to Disneyland back in February of 2016. I was 19 back then. I couldn't even drink. Like, let me tell you, we got to give a break by dress code. Now I'm going to have to go through this again. Like, a hoodie. Like, that's not a good thing to wear. That's not, that's even the same thing for hats. You like wearing a hat to school, it can be distracting. Like, if you're wearing a cowboy hat, it's the same thing. You could be hiding drugs, weapons in there. 
That's an opinion of school tradition that says, that's what they say, quote, students of a network go into the hoods of school and must remove them and place them in the lockers or bags once school begins. So, you can do it before school. Before school, you can wear the hoodies, but when, the, when, I, when you're in school, you always got to go. Period. Now we talked now we also talked about sexual harassment in schools. This is one of the examples. So back in December 2013, December 16, 2013, this this student was suspended for a year for hugging a teacher. And he won't graduate. First of all, that's crossing the PDA line. PDA stands for Public Display of Affection. Also, from telling you from my perspective, I want to see someone see someone this. I want to run along the journey line. But I don't like it when When someone that I know decides to like wear a hoodie or hugs a teacher at school, it's just basically a handshake. Like this, hey, I'll we'll see you again sometime. Handshake. That's it. That's all there is. And this is one of the, another one of these worst issues. This is also from Arizona. This happened, this was during, this was in January 26, or two years ago, when five, five to six students were suspended for wearing a racial slur shirt. I'm not going to say the racial word, because I don't want to be racist. And that word is racist. It's a racial slur and it's racist. And one of the students in that video decided to upon and say, hey, I'm sorry, hey, we're sorry for wearing that shirt. And I'm gonna tell you, sorry does not cut suspension. If you're suspended, you have to have time to think about it. Think about what you've done. What do you tell you more about what have more? Well, more of these uh, dress code will you school suspend students for being suspended for reasons good reasons come out a little come out a little bit. And up next I'm looking at a new uniform policy from back in twenty thirteen for Chile uniforms.
And then later he got a student who got suspended who violated dress code policy for having a natural hair. That's next. Now we're going to turn to a charge that happened in September, in September 2013. This happened when a student was banned from school pictures over a shirt. A see-through shirt. Like, I mean, a shirt that they, that they could see through the skin. My opinion about this one is she violated the school dress code. I mean, there's dress code policy specifically states that no see-through shirts can be allowed once, once a shirt met the dress code. Like, if you didn't wear that kind of shirt, you would wear another shirt under it. My opinion is that she broke the dress code rule. She got detention. And that was dropped from her detention and given a warning. Why decide to give her, why decide to sit there and say, hey, for this one, for this, for writing this school's dress code, you're going to get detention. And you will not attend school pictures. But then you decide, you know what, we're going to change our minds and let you off the warning. If I violated my school's dress code, I don't just get detention in, in school. I don't get detention and then in school suspension for violating the school's dress code. Remember last, like, last time we were on a break, we talked about the seven reasons why students get seven stupid reasons for kids getting suspended. And one of those was for having a creative haircut. A recap, though. Those reasons was like for a creative haircut. Like this one right here. A creative haircut. His name was Patrick Gonzalez. This this guy right here. If you never heard of this, here's, here's an article. Patrick Gonzalez, a chubby old student. Dale's Hill Middle School in San Antonio was given an in school suspension after his youth days for MBS during that part of one too far. He had a drone on the back of his head. And look at that, that picture right there. That's creating a haircut. But he was given an in school suspension for violating the school dress code. And not only that, it was on the news. Because he gave the kid playoff tickets and autograph swag. And this, this number two was the one that we talked about. Florida Middle School, Nick Martinez saw him nothing was given his best friend, a female student, a quick car for Jane for two classes while he was suspended from brace. They have a strict no hugging policy. That's that's going to a that's going to a sexual harassment policy. You hug someone, like if you hug someone that's inappropriate, that's sexual harassment. T-Bowen. Like, I don't know what school, like, if I were to cause a traffic jam in my school, I would be suspended. If I were to do the kind of crap like that, I would be suspended for causing a traffic jam. And that song that called I'm Sexy I Know It, that was, he was suspended for sexual harassment. Like, like back then they had say country songs like, uh, uh, like, 
I'm saying, come on, I see some country songs like Colin Ray, stuff like that. I turned out okay. And this one, now that just hit me right there. Calling a teacher cute. Miss Taylor is cute. That's all I said. Miss Taylor is cute. He got suspended for sexual harassment. And what about Shimmery? For holding the freaking door? Why would you be suspended for holding the freaking door? I held the door for millions of students and I get suspended? Nope. Would you suspend someone for holding the door? The whole an exterior door. That is one of the seven reasons. That's some of the seven reasons. And we're going back. And there's a new uniform policy from 2013 about Kepsha Highlander Shulu's uniform. And it was too short. You can't do that. You would violate the school dress code. Like, if you were seeing children walking around the class with that uniform on, that's violating the school dress code. And if that were to happen, then you would, they would, you would be out of the game. You would be disqualified for the game. All children would be disqualified for the game. Period. If even one person, one person would have wear the uniform to school, all cheerleaders would be disqualified for the game. Period. Now I'm friends with I'm friends with some cheerleaders. I shit you not. I am friends with cheerleaders. I know people who are cheerleaders. I'm friends with them. They know me. I know them. I know them. They know me. I'm friends with them. What are you gonna do about it? Why would she even think about wearing her uniform to school? I see football players wearing uniforms. That's an okay situation for them. The, the jerseys, the jeans, the shoes. That's a no problem thing. That does not violate the dress code. I have no problem with that. And if I saw someone wearing a, a chili uniform to school, I would say, oh, stop right there. Let's go to the office. I went to ask your Thomas this kind of stuff like this. If I already see something like a racial slur on my shirt, on someone's shirt, I would basically report all those guys who spelled out the who spelled out the racial slur to the principal's office. I would report those six students. And what about this NWA? No whites allowed. Because if you want a shirt that says the N-word on it, that's racist. It's a two-syllable adjective for now, it's the N-word. It's racist. It's a cuss word, and it's racial. There are racial, other racial words that I'm not going to even say, because YouTube will ban me if I say those kind of stuff like, like, if you ever heard a show the Boondocks, 
They deal with racism. They talk about racism. He gives it a rumor. Here's a little history. Wait. Abraham went to the slaves back in 1865, and then back in 1960, back in 1960 something, Martin Luther King gave his, gave his I Am a Gene speech where he wanted all blacks and whites to mix. And weeks ago, we, we did, we ta I, told, I told you about the input association test where it will determine whether you're racist or not. You saw we took the test, and if you haven't seen we took the test, you must be out of here, and you must be on the wrong planet. Or you must have got your hand stuck, your head stuck out in the sand. I mean, you're hanging out in the sand. But I have no tolerance to this kind of stuff. If I see something like that, like cheerleaders who wear a uniform to school, or... A student, or suspended for sexual harassment, I would just... I would just blow my top. That's it. I would just blow my top. I don't know what I would do, but blow my top. That's all I'm going to do. I'm back in the morning. I'm going to be back in a moment with a... Uh, with the program now. Give me a break. We'll be off for two days. But we'll have our season finale on Friday. And on Friday's season finale, we are going to focus... And on Friday's Give Me Break Friday Night Special, we're going to focus on students bringing guns to school. It's been years. It's we had we had school shootings, we had threats. Now we we saw teachers bring guns to school. Now we're going to focus in on or students who bring guns to school. That's our Friday Night Special on Give Me Break, and that's our report for tonight. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, America. See you on Friday. Have a good night.